It is the year 2011. Video game company THQ, makers of various games including a series of wrestling video games based on WWE, wanted to create something different from the usual SmackDown vs. Raw output that had been a thing since 2005. Something a little simpler with more of an arcade flavor. And so they begat WWE All-Stars, a game where the past meets the present and performed miracles by giving us this thing with the macho man Randy Savage just before he passed away. Oh yeah. So WWE All-Stars came out for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Nintendo Wii, Nintendo 3DS, PSP, and today's subject matter, PlayStation 2. Yeah, I didn't have a newfangled HD system back in 2011. I only had a Wii and a PS2 as my high-end consoles, and the PlayStation 2 version was way the fuck cheaper, so there you go. It's more of a historical curiosity nowadays, as WWE All-Stars would be the final WWE video game to grace the second generation PlayStation, as THQ would release WWE 12 exclusively to the then current generation of video game systems, and then a year or so later, they'd be out of business, and the franchise would move on to 2K games where... Never mind. Right, so let's get the less important stuff out of the way. WWE All-Stars has two main modes of play, Path of Champions and Fantasy Warfare. Path of Champions has three 10-match ladders for you to tackle, either taking on Legends of the Past, current WWE Superstar rosters of 2011, or tag teams. And there's little cutscenes that play to move the story along, as it were. Fantasy Warfare is a series of matches pitting a legend against a current WWE superstar based on a theme of sorts, and each matchup is preceded with some slick video packages, which makes the mode worth playing through to watch these things along the way. And I'll tell you what, whatever you thought about the product then, now, forever, together... <sighs> WWE always pulled off the best video packages that got you hyped for what was to come, although, in all fairness, there are some things that even the slickest videos could not salvage. Fantasy Warfare is where you'll unlock additional wrestlers, ranging from Hall of Famers such as the late great Eddie Guerrero or the late great Mr. Perfect, or more recognizable names of today like Edge or Kane, even all elite talent such as fucking Big Show. And then there's some jabroni named Drew McIntyre, McIntosh, or... Meh. <laughs> that guy's gonna put butts in seats. <laughs> Your match types are few but common. Singles, tags, three ways, four ways, steel cage, extreme rules, and such. There's also a create a wrestler mode, which is not quite as detailed as the SmackDown stuff. Probably nowhere near as good as the old N64 stuff, even. But it is something at least, so... Yay? Probably not. So All-Stars has a rather modest selection of modes and players and stuff, which might hurt the replay value for some folks since, since it's comparatively lightweight compared to the other games, if you're going for those completionist runs or whatever, you gotta unlock stuff or whatever, but eventually we have to ask, how's the gameplay? While I cannot speak for the HD versions, of which this PS2 version is a derivative of, but I can honestly say that the gameplay of All-Stars on the PS2 is adequately above average. Which is not as bad as it sounds. If it sounds bad at all. I don't think it does, but some people think it does, because... So I'm going to backtrack here for a bit, starting with the 2007 edition, the SmackDown vs. Raw series adopted this gimmick where you attempted grapples with the right analog stick, and while I'm sure that setup has its fans, I wasn't one of them, and despite owning a number of these games, more for the rosters than the actual gameplay, this analog grapple thing never really won me over. All-Stars ditched that in favor of a much simpler grapple button, and that gets high marks right off the bat, but the rest of the game doesn't feel all that different from the typical SmackDown output. You attack opponents with a variety of strikes, grapples, submissions, and perform timely reversals to get out of sticky situations when needed. It's a much more simplified affair, as you have this health meter of various stocks, and once you hit the red, it won't be long before you're pinned, submitted, or even knocked out. So you lay out your opponent with a variety of attacks, building up your three block signature meter on the bottom. Each block filled enables you to perform a signature move, executed by pressing two buttons at the same time. 
not only are you filling this signature meter, but you're, there's also this other meter that fills up when and when it's full, you can perform your superstar's finisher, essentially your most devastating attack in the move set. On a whole, the gameplay is pretty solid and its somewhat simplistic nature harkens back to a more old school flavor of SmackDown game, a more simplified control scheme that shouldn't take long to figure out and works well enough a vintage button-based grapple system that is preferable to the analog-based stuff of the SmackDown vs. Raw games of the time. There are no mini-games for minor actions such as submissions and such, which is a positive in anyone's book, quite frankly. And while you don't have unique stats per se, you do have a number of subclasses in which wrestlers fall into. High flyers, brawlers, and such. You know, generalizing there. So there's subtle differences in how they play and handle. If there's any minor quibble to be had with All-Stars, or at least this version of All-Stars, it's that for something that's aimed to be more faster paced than the typical WWE fair of the time, All-Stars plays much more methodically than, say, the old SmackDown games on the PlayStation 1, which were much quicker paced yet also simpler affairs. Not that I'm complaining, but for what it's worth, it's still a pretty solid game and anything that keeps away from the analog stuff earns high marks in my book. And again, once you learn all the functions that the game has to offer, control ends up being pretty solid with very few hiccups. So it goes without saying that the PlayStation 2 version of WWE All-Stars is a visually inferior version compared to the other console versions. The character models have less detail, the set pieces are less defined, there are some bits of slowdown here and there, and it's a generally less spectacular spectacle. With that in mind, it's not a particularly bad looking game. The general style of over-exaggerated action figure-esque caricatures and enhanced light streaks for big moves have been retained even in this less sophisticated format. It's actually quite charming. It's a visual style that better fits the whole circus vibe of that WWE universe. The intermissions are loud and colorful, but otherwise clean looking, and it's nice to see a character select screen with mugshots and not having to cycle through lists of names, which is... Something that would actually carry over, actually started doing that with a couple of SmackDown games around that time, so couldn't really complain in that regard, but whatever. In terms of the sound, tis a WWE game with lots of WWE entrance music and some stock licensed tunes from bands and such. The sound effects have a somewhat muff muffled quality to it, but I suppose a downgrade in hardware will do that. Commentary is provided by the Hall of Fame duo of Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler and... Well, it sounds like they attended the Raw 25th anniversary show that will take place at the Manhattan Center in about six or seven years' time from whence this game was produced. Also noteworthy is ring announcing duties from the late great Howard Finkel, which sounds fine in some places. Weighing 275 pounds from Miami, Florida, The Rock! And odd in others. And your winner knocks him down hard with a rock bottom. The rock. Oh yeah, the load times on this version kind of suck, but that goes without saying at this point. So it goes without saying that if you want a quality version of WWE All-Stars, go with the 360 or PS3 versions because this obviously ain't it. Naturally, this PS2 conversion is less than ideal if you want the full zaniness that the game has to offer. Regardless, WWE All-Stars is a perfectly adequate cap on the long run of WWE games on PlayStation 2, and if you come across this one and don't mind a particularly low-tech iteration of a solid sports entertainment game, then this should satisfy well enough. And you know, part of me is somewhat disappointed that we never got a WWE All-Stars 2, since a sequel could have fixed some of the minor issues this game had, but given where things were going over at THQ, perhaps it's for the best that All-Stars was spared the 2K treatment. I mean, for fuck's sake, they already fucked up the main series. You want them to fuck this one up too? What the fuck's wrong with you people?